Welcome back. In lesson 19.4, we'll look at a final feature of object-oriented programming, and that is a very useful thing called inheritance. So in this lesson, we'll learn what inheritance means, how it can be applied to OOP uh, programs, evaluate its advantages, and look at our friend, the exam question that we've already been looking at. Inheritance means that once we've created a class, we can create new classes that inherit all the attributes and methods of our original class. Then, um, obviously, then it would be identical. So you then make some little changes uh, which create this new class. But the amount of work is kept to an absolute minimum because the only thing that you have to write are the small features that have altered from the original class. So here's an example in pseudocode. It's uh, taken from an imaginary uh, HR program, personnel management program. Employees of a company have two attributes. I know in real life there'd be more than this, but two attributes, a surname and a job title, both of which are sent from the main program as parameters. And then here is a subclass called manager, which inherits all the features of the employees of the company. So managers are basically employees of the company. So they get all the features, all the methods, all the programming that go with being an employee of the company. They have the surname and job title fields that were defined in the employee class but they have one new attribute, a list of people that they manage, which is set as an empty list when the uh, object is created. So a manager is an employee in every respect. They have all the features of an employee, for instance, holidays and payroll and um, work uh, uh, dates that they started work and all the all the features of an ordinary employee but they've got one extra feature which is that there's a list of people that they manage and instead of having to rewrite all of that all over again we just say manager inherits employee they get all the programming that you've done already and then you can add some extra little features if you want and you can write new methods as well if you want to. And we could do it in Python as well. This is, is the same. This is the same constructor done in Python. So manager brackets employee. That's what the brackets at the start of a class definition are for. So manager inherits all the features of employee. Uh, they have the the employee init values of name and title, but they also have a, a list of people that they manage. So very, very similar to pseudocode. I think you can already see what the advantages of this are. It greatly reduces the amount of work that you have to do. The programmers have already learned how to use and work with a particular class so they can continue to use the skills that they've already learned. It means there's less chance of errors because a lot of the work's already been done. It's been tried and tested but you're not rigidly stuck with all the features of the original class that you started with. Sometimes students say to me, well, we don't need to do this. We could simply copy and paste the code that we've already written. You certainly could do this. And if you're not confident with inheritance, that might be a tempting thing to do. The advantages of using inheritance is that all the, the subclasses are dynamically linked to the superclass. That is, if I make any changes to the superclass, those changes will cascade down to all the subclasses that that inherit it. So if I see if I see an error, for example, in my code, 
I only have to change it once and that correction will be inherited by all the subclasses in the programme. Or if, if there's a change, let's say everybody's standard working week is changed from 40 to 38 hours a week. We'd only have to make that change once and it would cascade down to all the subclasses. So it's, it's and it's a lot less fiddly than copying and pasting, to be honest. So it's a bit like copying the code from one class to create a new class, but it's simpler and quicker and it saves everybody a lot of bother. And for this reason, inheritance is very widely used. So here's our friend. I think we've seen quite a lot of this question about the mobile phone company. And now we're on to the third and final part of the answer. We have to explain uh, the, the benefits of inheritance. So 12 marks overall. See if you can write perhaps four to five marks about inheritance because I think there's quite a lot to say about inheritance. It's quite an easy one to write quite a lot about. There are a lot of common sense advantages. And once again, our checklist, get the understanding mark by explaining that you, showing that you know what the term means. Get the application mark by saying how it will be used in the mobile phone example and write a sentence or so about the benefits of inheritance for uh, programmers, for example. So let's write a possible answer. Once again, I'm asking you to pause the video and I'll show you my answer, which I partly looked at the uh, mark scheme of the exam board to help me to write something that would meet their requirements. There's many right answers. So get your pen out, pause me for a bit and write that down. And then when you're ready, press continue to see what answers I wrote. So for understanding, I explained what inheritance means. A, a subclass inherits attributes and methods from a superclass, uh, and then we can make alterations or additions to it. And the application was uh, the login system of the mobile phone. So we could have a normal login and then we could have a fancier login, which is the admin login, which has extra powers and features. It's just an example. And uh, evaluation reduces the amount of work the programmer has to do, lets the programmer reuse tried and tested code, reduces the risk of errors. So all this very straightforward, really. And let's do a little bit of programming, extend the geometry program. Um, you've already created a program with classes called triangle and rectangle create a subclass called square that inherits all the attributes of the rectangle uh, but has the feature that the width and breadth of the square will always be the same value and create subclasses of triangle um, such as right angle triangle and isosceles triangle that's a bit harder to do so I'm finishing by just quickly reviewing what we've done this lesson. You should know what inheritance is. You should be able to describe it in a sentence or two that will get you marks in the exam. You should be able to apply it. It's where we're creating a superclass, which sorry, a subclass which inherits most of the attributes and methods of some kind of a superclass, but then has a few little special at, uh, attributes or methods of its own evaluation, all the normal advantages of reusing blocks of code, which saves us time, saves us effort, reduces the chance of errors, and how to quickly write two or three sentences to get good marks in an exam question. So I've now dealt with the three key features of OOP, which if you go back and uh, reflect back on what we've been talking about, as well as inheritance, we looked at polymorphism and encapsulation. 
you need to know what all of those are and be able to talk about them in a very straightforward way. In the final lesson of week 19, I want to go back over something that we've looked at before and just revisit it because it's a key concept and that's the use of get and set methods. So we'll look at a couple of examples of that in the final lesson in week 19. OK, bye for now.